Good morning, good afternoon and good evening my dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to another session of Q&A, question and answer session from the General Conference. And it's Monday once again and we are privileged to have uh, our dear pastor, brother Svetan Pitkov, the president of uh, the International Missionary Society, Seventh-day Adventist Church Reform Movement and it is a privilege to have him here and he's a senior minister as well as served in the ministerial department for for more than a decade I believe oh, yes. and uh, that really gave him the, the confidence to answer many of our questions. Thank you very much for Thank you for in here. inviting me. Thank you very much. Yeah. So before we go into our challenges, let us have, have a word of prayer, asking God's guidance. Let's pray. Our most loving, gracious Father in heaven, we thank you, Father, for this beautiful moment. Lord, we are going to study and we are going to find answers to many of our questions. Be among us, Father. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and spirit. We pray especially for Brother Petkoff, who is here and be with him father help us to find the answers and through him and uh, help him father to find the correct solutions to many of our conflicts and and ideas we have and to correct ourselves lord we thank you once again and we pray for all our viewers and fill all of us with thy holy spirit and guide us all these mercies and pardon for our sins we ask in the name of jesus amen amen So this particular topic we are going to study or we are going to discuss today the questions we received for many months and years on the nature of Christ or uh, extended version we can say human nature of Christ. So there are so many questions as we publish that we are going to have the question and answer session uh, today about uh, this subject, I received many calls from our brothers and uh, they said that, brother, this is a big topic and we have many questions and uh, I'm sure we are going to have two sessions at least to find answers to many of our brothers, uh, brethren's questions, brothers and sisters and uh, okay. Now, I, I would ask, normally I ask that are you ready for uh, the answers, but I would, I would say today, are you ready to accept the challenge? <laughs> because it With is the help so, of the Lord, yes. yes, it is a challenging question because many of our church members are having difference in opinion and uh, some misconceptions about this topic and this subject and uh, I think we need more clarity. And uh, that is why I like all, all of you to be prayerful and ask the guidance of the Holy Spirit to find correct answers and correct understanding about this subject so that we can understand Jesus, our, our Jesus. So that is what is important. Okay, the first question to you, brother, take off. How can you explain? How can you explain the mystery? Because the because even the Bible says it's a mystery. Mm -hmm. Even the spirit of prophecy says it's a mystery. The mystery of Jesus' incarnation. How can you explain this? Well, the right answer is that we cannot explain it. Okay, it's <laughs> since, a mystery. Since After that all. is a mystery and the Bible says it's a mystery, then we better don't try to explain it. Mm -hmm. And everybody who tried to explain it and begin to use genetical example and says no he have the genes of humans and he have the DNA these and he have the DNA <laughs> and he have the uh, this and that he it, it, we are running into speculation because that's not what the Bible reveals to us that's not what the spirit of prophecy reveals and it is very wrong if we, if we put our own interpretation into things that God have considered it occult. It's, he have considered it uh, out of limits for our knowledge. This is a kind of uh, a pride where I can say that we may run into a serious problem that we assume in us authority that God have not given us. 
Okay, thank you very much. I think that's the correct answer I could say because it's a mystery. Mm -hmm. So we have no answers to mysteries. Of course, we may we may find answers when we go to heaven and ask Jesus. He may, one day, maybe. One day, he will answer us. Okay, the second uh, part or second question I have is, how can you explain, how can you explain that Jesus' incarnation and his nature as such, now, we all know he is the creator and he is the son of God and he is divine and now he comes to, a, um, to be a human being. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> did he come with divinity or humanity, like coming, mm -hmm. I uh, the, 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 the flesh or the, or the body he had and, and the soul he had and if we separate these things, how can you define this? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, actually, the problem comes from uh, the history in Christianity. Mm -hmm. There has been a development of this doctrine about uh, Christology. Or the, Christology, yes. Yes, and the nature of Christ. And there are so many different theories. You know, the Catholic Church, they uh, began writing a lot of stories and some theories that he have the divinity, he was divine, 100%, and the humanity was just taken apparently. Okay, so he was looking a man, but he was not a man. He was a yes, supernatural mm -hmm. yeah, a being. And uh, we have, uh, praise the Lord, a lot of uh, testimonies from the spirit of prophecies and some Bible verses that reveal the opposite, that he was fully human and fully divine in that very same person, Jesus Christ. And uh, we're going to see the uh, testimonies of uh, Sister White that confirms that. As a church, we have dedicated a lot of time studying this subject. Uh, we have books written uh, by Brother Di Franca and they have been approved by the ministerial board and it's uh, very nice, especially one of the books is wonderful. It is uh, a beginning with the Old Testament, Bible verse after Bible verse, everything that has to do with the human and divine nature of Christ. And I really recommend this book. We can, at the end of, uh, maybe of this the, subject, maybe the next time I can next show, time we can the, show book the books and, and, yes, and we can the, tell them. how where to consider that in Amazon so everybody can 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 have it. Yes. yes, thank you very much for that, brother. And uh, another question, a brother asked me yesterday. Mm -hmm. he, he sent a message and he asked me this question and he said, God has a different, has different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Before Christ and after Christ. Different approaches. Mm -hmm. Before Christ and after Christ. So why this, this change came? That's an interesting question. Actually, the Old Testament and the New Testament, they are in absolute harmony, what is referred to the plan of salvation. However, we know that in the Old Testament, it was still the sacrificial system. Mm -hmm. And uh, the sacrificial system have a pedagogical uh, means, or the pedagogical system, so everybody who uh, give an animal and see the death of the animal, he could actually touchable, understand how severe the sin is and that a real life and real blood have to be shared in order that to receive the forgiveness. And uh, <clears throat> this is actually the difference. In the New Testament, we know that in Jesus Christ, the sins are paid off and we receive that uh, as a as a grace and mercy, that's the only difference. It's no different approach to the things. It's just the fulfillment of the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we face the reality. We face the real sacrifice, which is Jesus Christ. Okay. When we think of the subject of Christology, according to your understanding, what was the original position of our Adventist pioneers? 
Well, this is as any other topic. The Adventism have uh, gone through a development of the subjects and the nature of Christ have not been different in this case. Also the nature of the Holy Spirit and the nature of, and the existence of sin because they have been different uh, uh, believers, Christian believers from different denominations and they came with their package of beliefs and so they were uh, and it's needed to pass a certain time so they can exchange their beliefs and they can study the topics and they come finally to a certain conclusion. That's why we believe that the Seventh-day Adventist doctrine have been established approximately um, in 1920 by just before the death of Sister White. There is where the final decisions on doctrine have been resolved. However, the modern Adventism have introduced then additional development and uh, one of them is the change of the doctrine of uh, a nature of Christ. The human nature of Christ. Yes, the, it's, it's so-called uh, the nature of Adam, which nature Jesus took uh, was the nature of Adam before the sin, which called prelapsaria and uh, or the nature of Adam after the sin, the fallen Adam and this is post lapsaria mm -hmm. and uh, the original uh, doctrine of Adventism is that Jesus took the post lapsaria after the sin, the nature of Adam after the sin and uh, we're going to see what the spirit of prophecy says about because it's important that everything we say about the nature of Christ is yes, yes directly from the inspired word because it's a very crucial and uh, difficult topic and we cannot speculate in anything related to this important subject. Yeah, to add, add uh, what you were mentioning, I think the Adventist uh, church from the beginning they had a very clear understanding about the nature of Christ but the changes took place latter part of 1940s yeah. and 47 and 49 there was they, they removed certain explanation given uh, in, in their own publications and I have the book, books uh, with me that uh, you know published before that time and after the time it completely these paragraphs were removed. Uh, that is the time when also the subject about the sanctuary have been removed or they have been put aside the subject of 2300 evening and mornings and that we're living in a time of judgment and who is Babylon and who is the number 666 all this kind of uh, fundamental basis of Adventism have been little by little put aside because of unification with other Protestant churches and losing identity by losing identity the church begins to join with other doctrines and this is unfortunate but that is why the reform is called to keep the original yeah. principles alive okay that leads me to have ask you another question because one brother asked a question that do we have a resolution on that yes we have we have actually two resolutions mm -hmm. and one is uh, older resolution and another is a little bit uh, uh, a lot more elaborated in the general conference in Mexico this have uh, have took place and uh, the most part of the testimonies I'm presenting tonight is are part of that resolution yeah I think as Adventists we don't have to have any doubts about this because mm. testimony says, says very clear mm. all this uh, aspect I think let, we'll, let's go to the your PowerPoint presentation okay. and try to learn and then after that I can present some few questions more I have and while going on we can discuss. Thank you very much and uh, with the help of the Lord we would like to go forward and present to you this PowerPoint and as I mentioned um, most of the testimonies are easy to be found today in the electronic library you just type a few words and then a lot of testimonies are coming up 
And because that was a subject of discussion and the time of Sister White, she wrote so much about it and mm. uh, wrote to the church and Desire of Ages, when she was describing the life of Jesus, she mentioned a lot about his human and divine nature. And uh, we need to be uh, very uh, clear and about, about uh, the most of the subjects related to it. Okay, let's, uh, let's go with the first slide, and that is related to the questions that you just asked. It's about uh, the incarnation of Christ. It's a mystery. We have that in 1 Timothy 3.16. It says, Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was manifested in flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by the angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on the world, taken up, in glory that's it it's a mystery of the godliness the whole mixture of the divinity and humanity in the uh, personality of jesus christ his uh, vindication his resurrection all have been uh, very important everything was recorded and sin witnesses but at the same time it's unexplicable for us and this is um, a testimony that speaks about that the limited capacity of man cannot define this wonderful mystery the blending of the two natures the divine and the human it can never be explained man must wonder and be silent that is what I answer also to you uh, it can never be explained and if somebody tried to explain it be careful because that's not what God have given to us otherwise it will be explained in the Bible it's very clear but it's not so this is the mystery that have never can never be explained and it's not only for us but also the angels does not know how this uh, in infusion or incarnation have have taken place so that's why please uh, stop everybody who try to speculate and begin to talk about uh, uh, DNA he have the same DNA <laughs> as us and he have uh, uh, this kind of uh, tendencies and this kind and the other kind because we are entering into a holy ground and it is better to have respect and silence than uh, speculation. <clears throat> Another important part of this Christology is <clears throat> his nature as divine and human. Because as I mentioned, some people say he was totally divine and just apparently have the humanity. And there are other theories that says that he left his divinity in heaven and he came here alone as human and nothing of the divine. And both of them are extreme views of, uh, uh, of the nature of Christ and they're not supported by the testimonies. The inspired word says, let's see the first place here, he laid aside his high command and took human nature upon himself he held fast to the divine nature while he stood as the head of humanity living the law of god in our world and vindicating the honor and sanctity of this law this he did that man should not voice the word of satan that humanity could not obey the commandment of god this testimony says clear that he took humanity as it is because if he took humanity and some different uh, nature than, than what we have is that he cannot be our representative and as our example because then he fought against the sin and against the uh, temptation with a power that we cannot have in this position and that will immediately enable Satan to say okay they cannot keep the commandment Jesus keep it because he had supernatural nature and something different than what we have but we are going to see that Christ took uh, our nature because he needed to prove 
this in front of the universe. <clears throat> but our Savior took humanity with all its liability. He took the nature of man with the possibility of yielding to temptation. So it was not only that he was tempted, but he had the possibility of yielding to temptation. So which means that the temptation was indeed powerful and strong. And there are other many testimonies that, see, that says that he was tempted even hundred times more than we were tempted because the devil concentrated all his force actually to destroy Christ much more than what he do with individually with us. <clears throat> Christ was a human being. He served his heavenly father with all the strength of his human nature. He has a twofold nature, at once human and divine. He is both God and man. So we cannot doubt in that. It's not that uh, Christ was divine, just clothed apparently with the humanity. Either he left his divinity and come as a human alone. He had the two natures um, mysteriously combined. And that's, that's what the truth is about Jesus Christ. And anything else that we preach will be against the inspired word and it will be not correct. Another subject is, as I mentioned, is the nature of Adam, because it's, uh, Christ is called the second Adam, because of uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 17, it says, For if, because of one man, transpass death reigned through the one man, which more will this, who received the abundance of grace, of the free gift of righteousness, reign in life, through that one man Jesus Christ and this is the second Adam we see this in the testimonies and um, uh, it is clear that he received the um, post lapsaria uh, nature of, uh, of Adam which means the nature of Adam after he fall in sin uh, which is our also decision of the general conference it says in taking upon himself our humanity he took man's nature in its fallen condition um, we will read the testimony where this sentence is taken because the decision of the general conference is only that which is inspired word we don't have our own explanation on it and praise the lord Christ the second Adam come in the likeness of sinful flesh in man's behalf. He becomes subject to sorrow, to weariness, to hunger and to thirst. He was subject to temptation, but he yield not to sin. And that's very important because sometimes people begin to speculate and say, oh, he was tempted by Mary Magdalene and he was tempted here and tempted there. Or hey, they watch some movies and they say, oh, look at this. And so it is uh, unfortunate. We have to play, to pay respect to the nature of Christ, our Savior and God, and not speculate with anything that is not written in the Word of God. Furthermore, the testimony says, no taint of sin was upon him. He declared, I have kept my father's commandments. He had infinite power only because he was perfectly obedient to his father's will. The second Adam stood the test of trial and temptation that he may become the owner of all humanity. So we see that it's very clear, the testimony, we can continue the other and selected messages. It says uh, what a sight was this for heaven to look upon Christ who knew not the least tint of sin and defilement took our nature in its deteriorated condition obviously that is Adam after he fall in sin and the next testimony in the <clears throat> dissolved wilderness Christ was not in so favorable 
opposition to endure the temptation of Satan as was Adam when he was tempted in Eden. The Son of God himself humbled himself and took man's nature after the rays have wandered 4,000 years from Eden and from their original state of purity and uprightness. Sin hath been making its temple mark upon the race for ages and physical, mental, and moral degradation prevail through the human uh, family. So we see that not only he took the nature of Adam after the falling of sin, but also the apostasy of the human race for 4,000 years have its mark and, uh, and the weakness that of uh, the nature that he received. So there is no doubt uh, what Sister White means about it. It's not just one testimony, it's several of them. So we understand that uh, we should uh, uh, actually uh, fully trust in the Lord and, uh, and accept as the, uh, as the testimony uh, actually says. Here you have in full screen, so just in case that you don't see that uh, otherwise. We go to the uh, another topic, uh, he was made in the likeness of sinful flesh. For many people that is very difficult to believe and to understand the expression in English uh, he had or he, uh, likeness of sinful flesh indicates some kind of sinfulness and uh, people have hard to understand and to accept this but uh, we need to understand that when it says likeness of sinful flesh usually in the bible immediately after that it makes the clarification that but without the sin so there is uh, obviously a, 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 a duality of an understanding of the nature one thing says the the flesh or the physical nature that he received and other things is the the sin which is <clears throat> decision at for transgressions of the Ten Commandments mm -hmm. that he have never never done it also in addition we as uh, humans we have praxis the sin and we not only inherited the sinful nature but we cultivate a nature we get used to the sin and Jesus have never cultivated a sin because he never sinned it and when he received the sin of the humanity he received it an imputation that was imputed to him not that he transgressed the commandment so this must be very clear uh, for all the listeners and uh, we have here romans 8 3 that says for god have done what the law uh, <coughs> weakened it by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. So this is just one of the many Bible verses that speaks about the sinful flesh of Jesus. Then we have two testimonies clarifying additionally this expression. The example he hath left must be followed. He took upon his sinless nature, which the divine nature, our sinful nature that he may know how to succor those that are tempted and uh, we can see that uh, sinful nature does not uh, implica uh, implicit uh, any sin because we know that he was the holy uh, one and that he have nothing to do with sin and with the devil and desire of ages that's another important testimony we see here page 311 but christ rich us where we are he took our nature and overcome that we through taking his nature made overcome made it in the likeness of sinful flesh he lived a sinless life now by his divinity 
he lays hold upon the throne of heaven while his humanity he reach as us <clears throat> this this testimony is uh, very important because uh, indicates not only the uh, the human nature of Christ but also indicates the consequences of accepting this doctrine which means that we can really achieve the level of uh, obedience which Jesus demonstrated in his life and that is one of the theological issues that many churches have because if they accept that Christ had the post lapsaria uh, nature then <clears throat> we indeed can also keep the commandments but because so many Christians actually they say they are Christians but they don't keep the commandments <laughs> Then, uh, then they try to adapt the doctrine into their weak, uh, weakness of life, we can say. And uh, that's how Seventh-day Adventists change their doctrine. But praise the Lord, we have the original understanding the of this correct, subject. Yes. Firm, uh, um, you know, firm understanding of this subject. Yes. yes, praise the Lord for that. Brother, I have a question yes, with please. regard to that. That uh, the, uh, there's a question about Christ's sinlessness in the okay. sense that he did not sin mm -hmm. because of his divinity or because of Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what this testimony was explaining and we are going to see a little further other additional testimonies. He did not sin, mm -hmm. not because of his divinity. That's the point. Uh, he did not use his divinity for anything to achieve any holiness or in the battle with Satan. He totally uh, abandoned this possibility because we don't have this possibility he used the power of the holy spirit that the father sent to him and that is the same measure of holy spirit that we can obtain if uh, if we ask from the father okay so that is uh, that is the reason so that is the question that we yes. have in this and his holiness actually that he demonstrated in his life it's a holiness that we can achieve with the help of the Lord and that is the greatness of the plan of salvation it's not just that he give us his righteousness and he saved us by grace but he also sent the Holy Spirit so we can indeed live a life similar to one Jesus have left okay. here in, in there's earth. another question that okay they're asking that if Jesus <clears throat> sinned okay I don't know why they asked this question. If Jesus sinned, he would have wanted another savior for him. Mm -hmm. That is so. true, that is true. If uh, he will sin, actually what will happen is that the plan of salvation will collapse. Collapse. Yeah. We will have no savior because the savior cannot be a sinner. It must be a perfect, a son of God. And, uh, and that means that we will have no Perfect, redemption. no redemption, no perfect uh, sacrifice to redeem our sins and it will be no victory actually uh, over the sin which will jeopardize not only the salvation of man but also the name of God and his throne and his authority also. it will be jeopardized. So that's why when Jesus came on earth in human nature Satan took all his power effort. and effort, and power. make all effort to destroy him and to make him sinning because that will <clears throat> confirm actually his kingdom. But he couldn't, praise the Lord, Jesus was absolute victorious, sinless. With the help of the Holy Spirit. With the help of the Holy Spirit and that destroyed the power of Satan and the power of the death. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Okay, let's uh, uh, let's continue with our PowerPoint because we have uh, things to see still and to to be convinced because we want to see the testimony. <clears throat> uh, here is the confirmation that he could have sinned because that's another. 
theory that says that since he was divine and the humanity was taken up upon him as a, as a imagination, then obviously he cannot sin because the divine divinity inside of him could not be not tempted, no, no, no sin. But that was not the case. He was hundred percent human, and because he was hundred percent human, he could transgress the commandment and his temptation was real. Here is the testimony. But Jesus was the only begotten Son of God. <clears throat> he took upon himself human nature and was tempted in all points as human nature is tempted. He could have sinned. He could have fallen. But not for one moment he was there in him an evil propensity. He was assaulted uh, with temptation in the wilderness as Adam was assaulted with the temptations in Eden. So <clears throat> we can see that uh, he has mentioned Adam, but uh, in other places he says he was tempted as every one of us. And it's just a wide mention, several people and say Jesus was tempting like you are tempted and he overcome. So we can overcome any temptation that comes to us. <clears throat> Second testimony here, that is in Science of the Time of December 9, it says the human nature of Christ was like into ours and suffering was more keenly felt by him for his spiritual nature was free from everything of sin. <clears throat> so what we can understand is that the temptation in him was so sensitive exactly because of the holiness of his divine nature he failed the temptation and the sin with such a strength which we don't feel it because we are used to the sin we're almost like uh, uh, adjusted to the sin but that was not the case with jesus christ he didn't have this uh, cultivated nature. In addition, he was tempted into using his divine nature and some moment he can lost it and just let everybody die, destroy everything and forget about saving the humanity. And this is a temptation that we don't have because we don't have this kind of uh, <clears throat> power and strength and disponibility as, as he had. So we see that Jesus was tempted in all as we were and actually even more than us. <clears throat> here is another testimony about his holiness because that was the question here. His sinless divine nature united him to God Well, his human nature brought him into the symphony with the wickedness <clears throat> and suffering of humanity for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all point tempted like us as we are yet without sin so once again we see the bible is very clear here he was tempted in all as us but without the sin he have <clears throat> Uh, the sinless divine nature and ha have the human fallen nature however without sin this is very important to have the balance between the two sinful nature but no sin <clears throat> christ endured in his human in, in his human and divine nature combined obedient sinless to the last so we, what we understand here is that he was sinless not only in his divine nature, which caused the title may confuse us, but he was sinless in his divine and in his human nature. In both natures he was and he became until the end of his life sinless, obedient, sinless to the lost. He died for man, his <coughs> substitute, and surely endured all that man ever endured from the deceiving tempter that man may overcome by being a partaker of the divine 
nature. So we see uh, once again the consequences of accepting that doctrine is that we have the same chance, we have the same opportunity to be victorious as Jesus overcome. And uh, once again the General Conference uh, in, indeed uh, was very careful to repeat this again that he was tempted like us in several testimonies we have this in our decisions because this is very important part of the plan of salvation we can we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but one that have been in all point tempted like us as we are yet without sin Many seem to think that it is impossible not to fall under temptation, that they have no power to overcome and they sin against God with their lips, talking discouragement and doubt in state of faith and courage. That is the point that has to do with the soteriology or the plan of salvation. Christ was tempted in all points like us, we are yet without sin let us therefore come bodily into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help to stand in need once again that is the very important point christ was tempted he knows us as, as we are and he overcome he was victorious that's why we can also be victorious there is no doubt in this he used the same means. That was a question that people ask uh, Pastor Douglas. The humanity of Christ received the fallen foe and the engagement in battle with him. He was sustained in the conflict by divine power, just as man will be sustained by his being, a partaker of the divine nature. <coughs> Excuse me. He gained victory after victory as our champion, the captain of our salvation, and the divine approval <coughs> of God. And all the universe of heaven fall into his soul. And then, then would we understand, once again, no doubt, we have the same chances as he had. And here is also 2 Peter 1.4 by which he have gained to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature. Peter is very clear on that, Paul is very clear on that, John is very clear on that, that we become partakers of the divine nature through the Holy Spirit and through the gifts of and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, the, one of the last things we need to uh, finalize today in the study that Jesus was subject to death. And that's another problem that some people say, but how could Jesus die if he have divine uh, nature and the divinity is eternal, then it, it cannot die. And if he dies, uh, you know, the, the death is the consequences of sin but he never seen it. So how did that happen? This is a, a kind of very a complicated subject, but uh, we can resolve it with these two testimonies that we have. According to the law, Christ himself gave the fourfold that inheritance was ransomed by the nearness of kind. So which means that Christ was subject of the inheritance of the human um, human nature it means that he had the the line of his ancestors he had the line you know he was looking like David he was looking like the other that are mentioned in his genealogy because he was created by God it's uh, mysteriously and put in the womb of Mary but he was created in a such a way that he had upon himself the lines of his kind. Jesus Christ laid off his royal robe, his kindly crown, and clothed his divinity with humanity in order to become a substitute 
and surrender for humanity, the dying in humanity, him made by his death, destroy him who had the power of death. He could not have done this as God, but by coming as man. Once again, divine nature cannot die, but now he become man, so he could die and give sacrifice, make a sacrifice. Christ could die. By death, he overcome death. The death of Christ bore the deaths of him who had the power of death. By opening the gates of the tomb for all who receive him and their personal savior. So we see that this is uh, one of the reasons why Jesus need to adopt the humanity and not just apparently, but in reality, because he need to die really and he need to make a sacrifice as it is in the sanctuary doctrine. And uh, other testimony is also very important. Was the human nature of the son of Mary change it into divine nature of the Son of God? No. The two natures were mysteriously blended in one person, the man Christ Jesus. In him dwell all the fullness of the Godhead boldly. When Christ was crucified, it was his human nature that died. Deity did not sink in to die. That would have been impossible. This testimony actually resolved this um, problem that people could have a common sense. How is that that Jesus died, but he was divine, and it is divine, is eternal. So we see here that the human parts of Jesus Christ do die, and re in reality die, because he really make a sacrifice and he was in the tomb but his divinity could not die it's impossible but once again we touch the mystery because we don't know how this uh, could happen that uh, uh, you know part of you die but part of you don't die well what we understand is that this is what happened in the uh, in, in the mysterious nature of Christ, but uh, we don't understand how his conception was. We don't understand how he was uh, fully, boldly, 100% God and 100% man, and that two natures were, were bound together in his nature. We don't know how that's happened, but it's part of that mystery, as also Apostle Paul writes, is the part of his death and resurrection. Because we don't know how is that that the humanity died, divinity didn't die, and how is that that he overcame death and then he resurrected from the dead. And this is what is awaiting every faithful Christian until today. Yeah, thank you very much for that explanation, Brother Petkov. And of course that your, your point here, the death, the, cause, the subject, he was subject to death. Now, in this case, if he was not subject to death, why he cried mm -hmm. for separating from the Father? Mm -hmm. If he's not going to die, he, would, he wouldn't have uh, cried. And he that is, have, and yeah. not only the cry, but the whole agony that he had in Gethsemane and that he sweat yes. like blood, you know, yes. uh, from his uh, skin. There was such a... Uh, tremendous agony and it's not just the death but as you mentioned because he was receiving the sin of the world then it's a it separation was, it was with the heavy father. On him. and that was that was terrible yes. yeah yeah actually he was very worried uh, about the separation mm -hmm. more than anything he was very worried and he was he couldn't take it and the sin separated him actually because he volunteered to take it over Yes. Yeah. So very clear with this subject now, but we still have more questions, and uh, we will study about this uh, nature, with uh, because a lot lot of people are asking questions now. I think next week we should discuss about the creation of Adam mm -hmm. and uh, the creation of Jesus. Jesus, mm -hmm. and maybe the first Adam and the second Adam, mm -hmm. and how this difference take place. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, also someone commented uh, to us saying that uh, when Adam faced the temptation, mm -hmm. he was not sin. I mean, he had he didn't have sin before mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. but Jesus, he 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 took upon that sinful nature before he when he faced the temptations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was really a big challenge for Jesus more than Adam. Yeah, that's what the testimony says. Yes. <laughs> Yes, so yeah, someone commented on that. Yeah. They added as an added comment on this yeah. as well. So thank you very much, Brother Petkoff, about that. Uh, and I would like to ask all the viewers, please send in more questions. And I really received uh, questions from uh, others, and those questions will be answered on the on our next week program. And uh, because it is a little away from the subject, but it is talking about the human nature of Christ, but compared with with. Uh, the 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 Adam's concept of this, mm -hmm. the Adam's the creation of Adam and his sinful nature uh, before and after the sin. So, uh, so in relation with that, mm -hmm. and also today, if you have more questions, please send in to us so that we may include another question. another question that uh, many times uh, show up when we are talking about the human nature of Christ is how is possible that he take the fallen nature of human but without the sin. So this is um, it's a, it's a issue of concept and uh, we need to understand what Sister White means and what the Bible means and the sinful nature and how is that sinful nature but without sin because many people say if it's a sinful means full of sins. If you take literally the word how it's then that it says that he didn't have sin and uh, this is this is uh, a problem of terminology and we may be confused but uh, if we also see the testimony sister why use the sin simple nature what that means uh, in english and especially on the time when sister white was living so this is uh so it's important so people don't get confused. It's possible. This is when they say, when the Bible says sinful nature, it's obviously not sin. It's implied, and additional clarification is made so that there will be no confusion in that whatsoever. Yeah, because uh, I don't want to get into or open a new subject about the sin as such, but we will be talking next week about nature nature of Christ and nature yeah. of human being. And also in the testimony there is uh, the so-called Becker letter. It's mm -hmm. a letter to, to brother Becker. Becker. And then Sister White explains there because that brother uh, usually uh, 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 we understand for the context that he used to preach that uh, Christ was tempted in all. It means he was tempted in adultery. He was tempted in uh, the fornication and this and that and that and so Sister White writes to Becker and says stop doing that because Christ had a holy nature and the whole later is related to this part so this is very important that's why to have a balanced understanding of the subject and especially if we as a pastor or minister present this issue we must be very careful as the Bible itself, it says he took the human nature but without sin. Immediately make the balance and not allow the people to think that Jesus was actually a, a kind of uh, have a, a sinful um, tendency, corruption or what, whatever. Um, sinful in him. Or potential the, to sin. Of, yeah, the, the, the Bible says very clear, he's the, the Holy One. There's no yes, other one. No <laughs> There's no that. other one. Yes. We all have sinned it. There's no question in that. But Christ was different in this yes. case. The danger is as human beings, we are trying to define God. Yeah. Yes, that is true. That is a danger. Yeah. And, uh, and we better leave it as mm -hmm. a mystery. Because... Uh, Amen. Amen. Yeah. So I think we have to understand our limitations, as mm -hmm. Sister White mentioned in her testimonies. As a human human beings, we have mm -hmm. our limitations. So we need to understand that as well. 
and thank you very much once again and thank you very much viewers for your questions and it's very interesting that uh, you keep sending questions and uh, many questions we received we did not include in the program today but uh, definitely we will deal with those questions next week stay tuned uh, for our next program also uh, just on this subject nature of christ and uh, before we conclude today's program i would like to invite Please lead us in prayer. Let's yes. thank the Lord for helping us to understand this heavy subject. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before thee, Lord, to thank thee for the great plan of salvation, for the great sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ that was willing to come to this earth and purchase us from death and destruction and give us the privilege to be part of the eternal life. We thank thee that you make possible that we be partakers of the divine nature and that you can fight for us against temptation, against apostasy and make us obedient to your holy law. We thank thee for the example that our Lord Jesus Christ have uh, given us for the victory he obtained over death, over sin, and he's giving us this option and this opportunity. Help us, Lord, to believe in him. Help us never be discouraged, but always be ready to fight and to receive more of the grace and more of the Spirit of God so that we can be closer to you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Once again, we thank you, thank all of you, until we see each other next week on another session of Q&A. God bless you. God be with you. Amen.